Hey, Roger staff, I'm going to walk you through uh, a sample of a digital notebook. So in your Roger staff shared, there's a file I shared with you uh, called Miss Wynn Sample Digital Notebook. So you can go and access that under Roger staff shared. This is a different um, view on it. You can go find the file. Miss, it's under Google Slides. So Miss Wynn Sample Digital Notebook. So the point of a digital notebook is that you want to make it as interactive as possible for the students. So um, the cool thing is that per table of contents, it's linked to a specific slide. So for example, here, if I'm using the samples, adding integers using zero pairs, you want the kids to be able to kind of click and drag these, these shapes or resources. So that way it's inter interactive. Another example, Let's say you're classifying system of equations, you want the kids to kind of click and drag the appropriate graphs um, to classify them. So those are some benefits. So let me put it in present mode so that you can see. Um, the cool thing is that you have your title, your um, cover page, and then your table of contents. So it's going to link you to specific slides. So if I want to look at classifying system of equations, it takes me to the page. And there's also a home button that you can create that once you click it, it takes you back to the table of contents. So those are kind of neat things that, that you can do with your digital notebook. So I'm going to walk you through a little bit of uh, creating one from scratch. So we're going to create a new Google slide deck, new presentation. And automatically, your Google slide is on landscape mode. So you want to create this in portrait mode. So I'm going to go to File and Page Setup. And custom the 16 by 9, but we're going to custom it to 8 by 10. Or you can do 8 by 11. I'm going to do 8 by 10. So that way, it's custom. It's portrait mode. The next thing is that you the first page is your title page. So I'm going to go. Uh, you can create images. They can decorate it. But I'm going to choose an existing backdrop. So I'm going to go to slide and change actually the background. You can change your color. I'm going to choose an image actually from the internet. So I'm going to go to search and I'm going to search composition notebook. And that takes me to this image. I'm going to select the first one I see. And then I have my, 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 my uh, cover page. I'm going to type in my student name, my subject what period I have, and maybe 2018 to 2019. So then let's format it. The kids can kind of make it however decorative they want. And the next page then would be the table of contents. I'm going to right click and do a new slide. But since you, I would recommend that you have a master teacher one that the kids are going back and forth. So that way they're saving time to just copy sort of the worksheets, worksheets or templates that you've created. So I'm going to here go to copy and I'm going to copy the table of contents and I'm going to paste it in my student slide over here. Oops, I'm going to move it. So table of contents. So let's, I'm going to walk you through doing something as kind of like the math six adding integers. So let's go to a new page. I'm going to title it adding integers using zero pairs. What happens is in order for it to be interactive, I want the kids to kind of click and drag. So let me format it a little bit. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So adding zero pairs. So in math six, uh, it's represented, the positive integers are represented by yellow circles and the negative are red circles. So I can insert a shape here, uh, insert shape. I'm going to do, let's say, a, a yellow circle. So this is my toolkit. Right now it's gray. I want it in yellow. And I want a bunch of them so that way the kids can drag them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Command D since I'm on a Mac. You can do Control D if you're on a Chromebook. And I'm going to duplicate mm, as much as you want. You can do 30, depending on how many you think the kids are going to need. But I want them stacked on top of each other. So there's a way that you highlight it and then right click. Oops, let's try that again. Highlight all of them, right click, and you align horizontally and vertically. You have to do both. I'm going to align horizontally. It doesn't matter if you go left, center, or right. Then I'm going to align vertically. So now they're on top of each other. And I can move them. The first time I can move them. Now if I click out of it, it then get separated. If it's not something that you want separated, I'm going to undo, Command Z. 
I have to highlight the entire thing again to move the stack. Okay, so that's really important. The other thing now is that if I want to create, so there's, let's say, about 25 of them. I can then call, highlight the entire thing and then duplicate, but I want the red one. So I'm going to go fill color, red. Now there's a bunch of red ones on this side. So I can double check by doing that. Command Z. So that's a way where you can create images on top of the on top of each other. Let's take a look at our sample digital notebook. So over here, um, adding integers using zero pairs, classifying systems, you want the kids to, to drag their solution set, algebra tiles. Let's say that you have a worksheet that you created and you want the kids to just copy it and then put it in their student notebook and then complete it. Uh, let's say that you have a worksheet on on, on, on your hard copy. Um, the other neat thing is that you can also have them put it in their digital notebook. You can take a photo of it or scan it. And right here on the responses, you just create a text box and you're creating a text box for them to fill out their responses. So that's another thing that you can use um, to kind of just put all the resources all on one, one page. So let's go back to my student presentation. Uh, the other cool neat thing is the home page button, right? So you want to link your table contents to specific slides. So let's say I want a home button here. So I want a home button. I'm going to insert an image from the internet. Uh, let's look up home icon. So that's the one that I want. I double click or you press insert. This home is way too big for me. I'm going to make it smaller, link it over here. So you want it, so every time they click on it, it goes back to slide two, which is your table of contents. So I'm gonna click it, and I'm gonna insert a link. Typically the link is like you link it to a URL or a web, but now on the bottom is slides in this presentation. So I wanna link it to slide two, which is my table of contents, slide two. So I'm gonna apply. So now every time I have this page, you click on it, you can go back to slide two. So you can always, Check it out, check in present mode. Does it go back to that page? It does. Just kind of check to see to make sure that you're, you're, you're doing it correctly. Um, the other neat thing is that, let's say that the kids are doing work on their whiteboard. Um, so they're doing it on paper and they can also take a photo of it. So here you're gonna go insert. Your Chromebook has a camera, so you're gonna go image, camera. So I want this in their slide deck, and they're gonna take a photo of it, and they're gonna insert. Let's insert it in the, I don't want it in my table of contents. Let's copy it. Let's insert it here. Okay, so that's another way that you can use this digital tool and make it interactive. So go back to Ms. Wynn's sample digital notebook and kind of check out to see different uh, examples. So classifying systems, algebra tiles, Punnett squares, example worksheet, vocabulary strategies. There's some different post-its that you can have the kids do. There's also links to thinking maps, circle maps, mobile maps, flow maps. Uh, so be as creative as possible. And hopefully um, this will be a tool that uh, will be helpful for you and your students. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Have fun.